Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achern and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about the arrow operator in C++. We're going to talk about what the arrow operator actually does for both struct and class pointers, as well as implement our own arrow operator to see how it works. So over here in my source code, I've got a basic entity class type. Now, if I create this object normally, as I probably would like this and call print, I have no issues. But if this entity object was actually a pointer, so either it's it was allocated on the heap or maybe I just had a pointer to it for some reason, like this, in order to call that print function, I can't actually just use pointer.print like that because this is just a pointer. It's basically just a numeric value. I can't just call dot print on it. What I have to actually do is dereference that pointer. And that can be done like so. I can just say entity reference entity, for example, and then use the asterisk in front of the pointer like this to dereference it and then just substitute this with entity and my code works. Now to avoid this extra line, what I could also do is use my pointer, but surround it with parentheses and dereference it like so. Now I can't just write code like this because of operator precedence. It'll actually try and go to the object of print and then dereference the result of print. That's obviously not going to work. So you have to actually do the dereferencing first and then call dot print. Now this, this is okay and it works fine, but it looks a little bit clunky. So what we can do instead is just use the arrow operator. Instead of dereferencing the pointer and then calling dot print, we can substitute all of that with just an arrow to print like this. And what this actually does is dereference that entity pointer into a just a normal entity type and then calls print. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just a shortcut for having for us having to manually dereference it and surround everything with parentheses and then call our, our function or our, our variable as well. Instead of doing all that, we can just use an arrow. It works for variables as well. If I had some variables over here, I'll just make public int x, for example. I could also just you know, access X through the arrow like this, and then set it equal to whatever I wanted to, like so. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much the default use case for the arrow operator. That's probably how you're using it 90% of the time. However, as an operator in C++, it is actually possible to overload it and kind of use it in your own custom classes. And I'll show you an example of why you might want to do that and how you can do that over here. So suppose that I was writing some kind of smart pointer class, like scoped pointer. To keep it simple, I'm just going to have it have an entity pointer. When I construct this scoped pointer, I'm going to take in an entity as a parameter here and then assign it to my object. In the destructor, I'm going to call delete entity or delete um, obj. And so now I've got a basic scoped pointer class that will automatically delete my entity when it goes out of scope. So I can use it like so, scoped pointer entity equals new entity. And that looks pretty good. Now I want to actually be able to call this print function or access this X variable. So how do I do that? Well, right now, I can't really, like I can use dot, but then like I could make either this public or maybe I could just have something that returns an entity pointer, like get object like this, maybe that will return my object. That just looks way too messy. I want to be able to use it like a heap allocated entity, right? I want to be able to use it as if I had written code like this, which would mean that I could just write, well, that, and it would work fine. I want to be able to just substitute this and have it kind of be used the same way. Well, that's where you can overload the arrow operator and make it do that for you. Instead of get object, I can write entity pointer operator arrow with no parameters like this, and then just return m obj. And you can see suddenly this compiles and will run just fine. If I hit F5, there you go. You can see that it's calling my function and printing hello. Now in the case of this being const, you could also provide a const version of this operator. So I'll copy and paste this, have it return a const entity and mark the operator as const like this. And that will now return a const version of this. And of course I've marked this function as const. If it wasn't const, you can see I'm not able to call that function. So the function has to be marked as const over here as well. And everything basically works as if this was just a const pointer like that, no difference. But now of course, since it is a scoped pointer, I've automated the deletion of this actual object. Pretty cool stuff. So that's how you can overload the arrow operator to function in your own classes. It's very powerful, it's very useful because you can see that you can start to kind of define your own constructs and your own types in the language and automate things. And it looks like normal code, which is exactly what we want. A lot of people will argue that that's a bit confusing because yeah, it might look like normal code, but it's not. However, I think that if you use it properly and if you're sensible about it, then this, this is actually really useful and can help keep your code really clean. For fun, I'm gonna show you one more way how we can actually use the arrow operator to get the offset of a certain member variable in memory. So this is kind of like a little bonus segment, I guess, of this episode, but it has to do with the arrow operator, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it in. Let's just say that we have a struct here maybe 
called vector three. And we basically just have a three component vector float x by z like this. Now suppose that I actually wanted to find out what the offset of this y variable was in memory. So we know that this struct is structured out of floats, of course. So it's got float x, y, and z. Each float is four bytes. So if the offset of x is going to be zero, it's the first thing in the struct. Y is going to be four, because it's four bytes into the struct. And then finally z is going to be eight bytes. But what happens if I suddenly move this around then, well, the class is going to work the same way, but they're going, it's going to have a different layout in memory. So maybe I want to write something for myself that actually tells me the offset of each of these members. And I can do something like that using the arrow operator. So what I want to do is kind of access these variables, but instead of from a valid memory address, just from zero. So this is kind of hard to explain, but, if I'll, but I'll show you what I mean. I'm literally going to write zero and then cast this into a vector three pointer, like so, and then use the arrow to access X. And this is going to give me, this is going to try and give me some kind of piece of invalid memory. But what I'm going to do is actually take the memory address of that X. So now what I'm doing is basically getting the offset of that X, because I'm starting at zero. This could also be written as null pointer, by the way. And if I finally take that and just cast it to a regular integer and write offset over here, I'll print that. And I'll hit a five. You can see it gives me zero. So what I'll do next is I'll change this to be Y and check out what that looks like. Four, that seems right. And then I'll change it to Z. And of course the value should be eight. And you can see that it is. So what we've done here is we've used the arrow operator to basically get the offset of a certain value in memory. Pretty cool stuff. And this is actually very useful for when you're serializing data into like a stream of bytes and you want to figure out offsets of certain things. And we'll kind of get into this kind of exciting code when we start doing the graphics programming series and the game engine series and all of that, because we'll be kind of dealing with streams of bytes all the time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, then you can hit the like button and let me know that you enjoyed it. Leave any comments or feedback you might have in the comment section below. And if you really enjoyed this series and this video, then you can support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. You'll get videos early. You'll be able to be in a private Discord channel where we talk about what goes into these videos and all that fun stuff. And of course, you're helping to support the series and making sure that we make more of these episodes. I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.